The Music is Life podcast has our own merch now over on tpublic.com. Click the link below in the video description. Looking for some new threads? We got t-shirts, long sleeves, hoodies, crew neck sweatshirts, tank tops, baseball tees, and also clothes for kids and onesies for your little infant metalheads. Don't want clothes but love the Java? We got you covered with coffee mugs and travel mugs. Need protection for your electronics? We've also got phone and laptop cases. We've got everything you're looking for at the tpublic.com Music is Life podcast store. Use my link below for fast service. Thanks for your support. TerraNut is proud to offer you a natural nut bar chock full of healthy fats, minerals, and protein that meet your demands. Go to their website, www.terranut.com. You can order from them directly and they will ship it to you. Use my coupon code LUMAVS and you will get a 25% discount on your first order. TerraNut Superfood Snacks, www.terranut.com. Don't forget to use coupon code LUMAVS at checkout. Fuel your life. Severed Angel, the new melodic metal band tearing up internet metal radio around the world. Alex Rapetti, Lou Maz, George Dimitri, Mark Muchnick, Wayne New. Featuring members of Infinite Spectrum, Tension Rising, Timeless Haunt, The Nightmare Stage, Phoenix Rain, and Project Resurrect. Six singles available now, including their cover of Ghost Square Hammer. A fate worse than death. Run and hide. Bump in the night. Mount Sinai. And Professor Finch. This is melodic metal that will get heads banging and fists raised. Be on the lookout for the self-titled debut full length from Seven Angel on Slip Trick Records in spring of 2023. For more information and merch, go to Seven Angels Linktree page at linktr.ee forward slash Severed Angel. Severed Angel, get ready to ride the dogs of old. Looking for some new podcasts to listen to? Well, look no further than the Rat Sound Review Network. Rat Sound Review is taking over the podcast world with plenty of shows to choose from within their network of entertaining programming, including the flagship show, Rat Sound Review, with Wayne Noon, Greg Noggle, and Lou Mavs, as well as occasional co-hosts Manny Mejias and James Lilquist. We also have the official Rat Sound Review spin-offs, such as Album vs. Album, Screams from the Grave, where we discuss beloved yet forgotten hard rock and metal albums of the past, and a King Diamond podcast called This Broadcast Belongs to Them. We've also got Old Man Metal's music. The Metal Thrashing Nerd Podcast with Metal Thrashing Mike. The Timo Toki Podcast featuring Stradivarius and Avalon founding member Timo Toki. The BS Sessions with Mark and Jerry. Just the Cheese Please, a podcast dedicated to cheesy films of the 1980s with Tara J and Adam. And the Music is Live podcast with Lou Mavs. The Ratsaw Review Network is your go-to one-stop shop for the best podcasts out there today. Go to RatsawReview.com for more info. And to find out where you can find, follow, subscribe, and comment on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and all streaming platforms. The Ratsaw Review Network. We're, We're taking, taking over. Ladies and gentlemen. How do? We are ready and waiting for you now. If it's a fight that you dare see, we've acquired our strength through pain. No more are we pathetic game. You are the reason why we claim that we've all become this way. And I regret this prison that I created for myself. Who can it be? Who makes us cry? Who won't save us from ourselves? I close my eyes and then I pray. 
mentioned before about like the whole hip hop thing the difference is between what's rap and what's hip hop and how you're not too crazy about what's going on with the genre today so you know if you wanted to speak on it go ahead the reason why I released Cindy's song even though it's a rap song I haven't released any rap songs if you know that I haven't you know I grew up on it so you imagine I've been making some hip hop right possibly yeah and I have first off Cindy's song was something I made with her so it's like all right I made it with her so I'm gonna put it out there Cindy just happened to make a hip hop song. You are now listening to Colobi, 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 some people are very talented in rap music. RZA of the Wu-Tang Clan being one of them. Well, RZA is a genius, but <laughs> um, there are a lot of very talented rappers. There are a lot of very talented people making music. The beats themselves are so evolved compared to what they want. Technology, a lot of various things come to play with why that is. But musically, there's some very talented people out there. But with the whole drill scene, and drill is a rap scene. It's a different style of rap. I know that you don't really keep up with it, but so many talented people, but there's too many people over it. Just because you know somebody down the block. I know it was going on back in the 90s, but it just seems different. Maybe because I'm older, I don't like the idea of me creating something that might go to that, I guess is what I'm saying. Whereas hip hop itself was about telling stories Hip hop was about fighting the system, so to speak. If you want an example of hip hop, Chaos One is hip hop. Wu Tang Clan brought it back to hip hop. Hip hop was about telling stories, not like, oh, I hate this person, I'm gonna shoot him, or I'm gonna shoot him. Yeah, it might happen, something might happen, somebody on the block, he might tell a story about it, but it's not about spreading hate. And I get it. It's like if somebody, your friend, you wanna seek revenge, or somebody beats up your friend, you wanna seek revenge. I've been there to a small degree growing up. But there's too many people killing themselves right now. Like, I remember watching this YouTube video. This this uh, guy, like he's a creative, like he's two white guys. They go to Old Block in Chicago, which is like one of the worst projects. And they're going there, like, okay, I kick a rap for you. They're kind of like, I guess you could think of like Weird Al Yankovic goes to the hood, right? And the kid, there's like young little 15, 14 year old kids, and they're like, sure, yeah, go. And he always raps, and they like it for a minute, and he goes into like some really stuff. He's doing it on purpose to get a reaction. The kids are playing around with like, no, you can't go there. They're not even getting mad at the guys for doing it. And then they like, so the guy lets these kids rap some of them. And this one kid was like phenomenal. I was like, holy crap, this kid can spit bars. And he's like 15. So I'm like, all right, I want to check out this kid, right? A month later after that video was shot, the kid's dead. On what grounds? He's dead because the rival groups, what they call ops, 
killed him. Ops? And it's just like ops means opposition. It's, okay, I got it. Basically, if you're like, let's say you live in one project and there's a project across the street from you, they're your opposition half the time. And it makes no damn sense. I don't like how it's so negative. And I grew up on hip hop or rap music. I grew up on, I love DMX. But DMX is telling the story from frustration with him. Yes, he's done stuff. And yes, we've all done stuff. But I don't know. It's something different. So that's really why I kind of steered away from it, to be honest. But like my friend said, you're not responsible for what people do with it. Maybe one day I will release some of the rap music, the rap beats. I would love to work with like old school hip hop artists. And in general, I would love to work with people that are rap. But I'd be willing to work with them because I kind of feel like I know who they are. I don't want that weighing on my shoulders. I understand where you're coming from, but I also agree with your friend that the quality control of your output, you can't control the way people would react to it. And you definitely can't control their actions. I say if any of the stuff that you have is good, then put it out. But you should never have to put that kind of pressure on yourself to think that because of the opposition's and whatever it could rest on your conscience in a negative way if someone were to die over it i mean i look i I believe in the quality of human life i don't like any kind of violence towards people i don't like any kind of violence towards domestic animals i don't like any of that stuff but unfortunately people interpret things how they want if they do something stupid it's not the artist's fault you know that's just my opinion yeah i get what you're saying and i'm kind of getting to that point but I don't know. I just got taken back on 15 year old kids being <laughs> just so talented. This kid was such a good rapper. I wish I could remember his name. I'm like, wow, this kid is like real good. There was a lot of great rappers from this, uh, the new era. But when it comes to hip hop, hip hop was always about a message. Rap was about rhyming words. Chaos One spoke against the system, a mortal technique. That's hip hop right there. Hip hop has always been about speaking messaging, messaging, just saying what's on your mind. Not following a crowd, per se. Wu-Tang makes a bunch of sword sound effects and stuff in their music. It's like, definitely not following a crowd there. No, definitely not. I guess that's a problem that I have with like a lot of punk and hardcore bands. It's like, after a while, they all start to preach the same message. And somehow they hide behind the facade of individuality. Well, how could you be promoting individuality if you're promoting automaton behavior? That's not individuality. You know, that's not, uh, that, that's, me, not, that's, not that's not being yourself. Let's talk about the whole metal scene. No scene persecutes themselves more until like, you're not this, you're not that, than freaking metalheads. I hate gatekeeping. I it's hate like, it so much. Oh, it's like, you gotta be pigeonholed into this type of music, and then you're metal. Or that's not metal. Or this is this. Or this is that. And people don't even listen to music to even have a true opinion of them. Like, metal in general is kind of like a subculture as it is. And I say metal, put hardcore in metal. I don't really want to categorize them to every little possibility. Like, you got hip-hop, you got rap, and then this drill is trapped in a thousand different genres now. It's like, keep things simple. In general, metalheads are retarded when they persecute each other. For, oh, this is metal, this is not metal. No other group does that. You got the <laughs> rap kids, really, like the younger kids are like, oh, it's old school rap. Fine, that's old school rap. It's like, okay, I get that from the older generation, but they're not like, this isn't rap, but this is that. It's like, it's it's retarded. Metal Hunt's like, only, it's like, let's be a subculture that barely has a big population as it is. Let's isolate ourselves even more. And then everyone's not individual at that point because they pigeonhole themselves into, this is hardcore kids or whatever like you were talking about. Or the black metal people with the face paint. It's like, look, just fucking appreciate music. Shit pisses me off. <laughs> I have to admit, When I was younger, I was like that because, unfortunately, the environment that I was raised in had that gatekeeping mentality. Growing up in the 90s, if you weren't dressed in baggy pants, you were called a herb. If you weren't dressed in Uh, black leather... That's the greatest time ever. I need to bring her back. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. And if you weren't wearing a a Megadeth t-shirt or whatever, you were called a poser. So I admit that a little bit of that snobbery did transcend i'm Shame. proud i know but i'm proud to say that it was people like you that broke me out of that mold and you basically said stop being a musical snob without telling me that i was a musical snob you're right metalheads do have a tendency of really turning on their own and you know i guess you could say that about any genre i mean even when you were talking about before about the opposition you know with with like the the rappers and this and that 
but it's 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 a shame if i knew then what i knew now i would have probably made more effort to expose myself to more things without fear of being ridiculed the truth of the matter is this is my theory of what you're saying i grew up differently than most people i grew up where i was always the odd one out just because of my skin color where i grew up i didn't know people that look like me for the most part like my friends were all different tones but not this so even the music i listened to hip-hop was predominantly a black music and i say predominantly because there were the beastie boys there was the rick rubin etc there were all different cultures spray painting. Yeah, I mean, Eminem but, didn't come into play until we were in our freshman year of college. The truth is, white people have always been kind of around hip-hop. The point is, I grew up around different cultures. My neighborhood, the people I grew up with were mostly black, and then the people I grew up with after that were mostly Haitian. And then my neighborhood became mostly Guyanese, which is a different culture in and of itself. But I would never, I guess, people don't look like me. So I've always been the oddball out. So for me, I guess that's why I came more normal. That's why like the whole rock scene where people are like, oh, you're a poser, you're this, you're that, doesn't make sense to me because I already grew up where technically everything about me would be a poser. I can't change my skin color. It's just, I grew up on that. I didn't know MTV. I didn't have cable like we talked about earlier. So for me, it was just Hot 97 all day long. Then whatever the old station is, my parents listened to in the car. Outside of that, I didn't know Nirvana until like college. I never heard Nirvana. Mm, fair enough. And you know what? I think the the moral of the story is the whole gatekeeper mentality within genres, it's stupid. It's oh, really it what it is. It's stupid when people point fingers at each other for differences to this day. The thing that makes humanity not crap is when people are all different. But this day and age, we have to all be this. We have to be this side. It's it's really sad. It is. There is one argument that I have to make about our discussion. My eldest niece bought an Avenged Sevenfold t-shirt. She only knew Avenged Sevenfold because of the songs that I played for her. I don't think she listens to Avenged Sevenfold now, but she still has a t-shirt. Now, in the eyes of a scene kid, she'd be called, you know, whatever have you pose or whatever but who cares what they say what does annoy me is when i see a kardashian wearing a cannibal corp shirt i don't know why that bothers me it shouldn't but i think it just bothers me because it's not genuine it seems like they're just doing that just to be edgy oh look at me i'm kim kardashian or whichever kardashian kylie jenner and i'm wearing a death metal band shirt i'm just like Something tells me you don't listen to death metal. There's part of me that thinks that. But then when I think about it, like after two minutes, I'm like, why do I care? I don't. Your rebuttal? I'm going to go on the total other spectrum here. Yeah, I get what you're saying. At the end of the day, it's making the band money, right? So there's that. Because somebody bought the show, they had the rights to the merchandise, so that's great for them. Who's to say that these people don't listen to metal? The Doors back in the day, I just thought it was old people music because I don't want to tell people. Because I like The Doors. I like, heck, I even liked a little bit of Elvis here and there. But I didn't tell anybody because all my friends' family, because once again, I was a different race than everybody, they didn't listen to that stuff. And it just sounded like lame, quote unquote, old people music at the time. But I loved The Doors, but I didn't say anything back then. So how do you know that they don't like Cannibal Corp? People don't like to say a lot of things about themselves. People like to be more private. I'm very open. You ask me a question, I'll tell you flat out. I have no filter. But mm-hmm. it's just, I can't fault people for being afraid of being shamed. I mean, this political disaster of our climate that we have when it comes to politics is mm-hmm. proof that people are all being quiet because they don't want to be persecuted. What side you're on? It's just like... A lot of people are quiet because they don't want to get involved in it. I don't personally want to get involved in this whole political bullshit. Well, you bring up a good point about what you said before. If a Kardashian is wearing a Cannibal Corp shirt, then Cannibal Corpse got paid. And yeah. to me, it's like, that's the only solace that I could take from that. <laughs> and yes, I say solace when I'm referring to Cannibal Corpse. That's hilarious. But you're right. I mean, hey, if it makes a bad money... Good for them. You know what? All right. Once again, 
Your geniosity wins me over. Thank you, Mr. Mickle. <laughs> well, All right, cool. Everything's so we... expression in the end. That's it really, really is. what it comes down to. That's why for me and doing music, I'm willing to work with anybody. Like I said, can you whistle? <laughs> <laughs> you never know what can come up with somebody that has no clue about music. Like Cindy, we made Welcome to the Block. She had no clue about the musical side of any of it. But, but that's what came out. Yeah, she needs somebody that has kind of a clue, but she can look at things in a slightly different way to come out with something that you wouldn't create. So somebody might take an 808. Now, an 808, for those that don't know what the heck an 808 is, it's just really heavy bass, right? And they might play like the higher octaves because they don't have a clue about, oh, you got to put it in the lower octaves or the mid-range. They might put it high. So now that bass is suddenly a high-pitched instrument, which or mid-range probably but it might actually make something really cool because it's being done in a totally different context because they have no clue what they're doing so the truth is anybody can play with it music is malleable in general life is malleable everything is malleable i'm going to become a wise sage eventually you'll see me in a robe and um i'll be floating in the air it's wait all did about you just come expression did you just compare yourself to Rick Rubin? That's probably where I'm going eventually. Just wait till the hair grows white and I get a little older. Well, I'm sure you'll also produce better stuff than Rick Rubin has been putting out lately. Last thing he did that I enjoyed was the uh, Johnny Cash stuff. I don't judge any musician anymore, by the way, unless they're an asshole. If they're a personal asshole, then I'll judge it. Even Rick Rubin, when he didn't do good with mixing Metallica, I get what he was trying to go for. The Metallica album I enjoyed... The but, album that he did that I did not enjoy was Black Sabbath's 13 record. I haven't listened to it, so I can't comment. I can comment. Panic! 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 They actually had Brad Wilk from Rage Against the Machine play drums on that. And I feel like a big part of Sabbath's sound was the original four. There was a magic there that Ozzy, Tony, Geezer, and huh. Bill had. And when you take one of those elements out of that original lineup, the magic's not there. Rick Rubin, I, I know what he intended to do with them, but I just feel like the result wasn't good. He basically said, okay, write the album that you should have followed up your first album with. But the first album was followed by Paranoid, which is a classic in rock history and in 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 metal history uh, uh, for many sabbath fans to this day it's their, it's their favorite album but it's like so you're basically telling them remake paranoid which is exactly what they did and i i wasn't crazy about it that was his concept with uh, metallica as well to go back to the old stuff so he kind of used the same strategy i can't fault him for it i get where he's coming from but it's art at the end of it day and sometimes it doesn't work i mean we can all say for the most part saint anger didn't work sorry metallica well for me it worked with metallica but it didn't work with sabbath but you know what though music is all subjective it's really all what you like and the fact that we can have different opinions on it and still be respectful i think that says a lot about fans who you know it, it's an important part for them but they also they can walk away from it confident with how they feel about it yeah so the music connects with certain people at different times like i will say back in the day i didn't like slay i know slay is like the, the god band at the time it's mm -hmm. like one of the big ones but i just i couldn't vibe to it i don't know i just didn't like them now i love them but it's also about things change and raging against the machine these days i'm not the biggest fan of right now and it's like that was my favorite band because i was like that band literally changed my life in many ways and i still will say they changed my life in many ways wouldn't have these bad boys behind me if it wasn't for raging against the machine i wouldn't have ever known what a mosh pit was if it wasn't for raging against the machine which in all honesty mosh pits helped me out greatly as a college student because had a lot of anger issues and it was a positive way to release that anger it was great therapy it definitely was yeah so i don't well, know i guess i'm getting older still an asshole but 
Uh, I just I look at things in different perspectives. Maybe talking with that, I'm going to credit to because they were the first people that I felt looked at music in a different perspective. So everything has an influence, and I'm still just learning to this day. When I finally get everything right, I'll probably drop dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you got to keep going. And uh, considering everything that we talked about, you're right. It, I can I can admit it doesn't bother me at all that. Kardashians are wearing cannibal corpse shirts. So I would like to take this opportunity to apologize to the Kardashians, but I would also like to say, fuck you, Malaka! <laughs> and we'll end uh, on that. 